Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So today I am using the high budget production quality of taking two white pieces of printer paper and putting them together on my desk. So I can show off the all black analog pocket without having the black on black contrast keeping you from being able to see this pretty amazing device. And as you can see here in this footage, I have an actual Game Boy copy of Castlevania that I can play on this FPGA handheld. And I'm currently working on an in-depth review of this device, specifically focusing on if this device is worth trying to fight to find one. Currently, this device and all its peripherals are back-ordered until 2023, and I just need a little bit more time. That in-depth review will be coming within the next week or two. So for this week, I'm just going to do a short video showcasing the fact that there is a way for you to run some Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs off of the SD card. And it's a fairly easy process, but there's not a lot of tutorials or videos that effectively show you how to do this. You can get some really awesome ROM patches through this method, like a full color version of Metroid 2 Return of Samus. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to patch these ROMs into a dot pocket file system so that the analog pocket can read them. And I'm going to actually show you some of these ROM patches because quite frankly, they are very awesome and they are a joy to play on this device. So if you already own an analog pocket and you are looking to get more out of it, then this video is for you. So let's dive in and let's get started. So this tutorial is going to start at the website retropatcher.johnabrams.com and this is a website that will take your ROM files and automatically convert them into dot .pocket files. So I'm going to start here with two folders on my desktop, one with all my .gb and .gbc files in a folder called to be patched and another folder called GB Studio. That's the folder that'll ultimately end up on our SD card. And it's a very simple process. Just go ahead and click the button to open your ROM files and then go ahead to your to be patched folder and select all of the ROMs within that folder. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where to get the ROMs, but if you're watching this, more than likely you already have a collection ready to go anyways. And you could see it very quickly opened up all of my ROM files and showed which patches were available. And in most cases, you'll just get the game, but in other cases, you'll get actual patches and ROM hacks. For example, there are colored versions of Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue, and there are also colored versions of Super Mario Land and Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins. And you'll also get the originals as well, except in the case of Super Mario Land, we only got the color hack. Now, this isn't perfect if one of these developers did not develop a patch for a game that you're trying to upload, then it will not show up as available for download. You could see at the bottom here, there are no patches for Dr. Mario or Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. So once you reviewed all this information, you could click apply and save all. And if you're using Chrome, you may have to allow multiple downloads from the site but you could see it's automatically patching and downloading a whole bunch of dot .pocket files. And this process will not take very long at all, but when all is said and done, all of these patched ROM files will be in your downloads folder ready to go. So once everything's done, let's go ahead and open up our downloads folder and we're gonna move all of those files into the folder that we labeled GB Studio. And that's just as easy as putting the two folders side by side and then selecting your dot .pocket files and dragging them over. And then as you're dragging them over, just take a look at the file names just to make sure that there are no errors in them. I know when it came to the Pokemon games, only one of them was actually named properly. The other ones had the E in the middle removed, probably because of the accent on the E. So I just went ahead and renamed them and put the E back in before I dragged the file over. 
And once we have all those ROMs in the GB Studio folder, it's just as easy as taking the GB Studio folder that's on our desktop and dragging it over to the USB drive that we are going to put into our analog pocket. And you just want to make sure the GB Studio folder is the only folder on the USB drive at the moment. And then once everything is moved over, then you should have a saves folder and then you should have all of your dot pocket files. Now before we put the SD card back into the analog pocket, we're just going to download one more indie game called Marzipan Beef Reverser. This is from the website homestarrunner.com, which has been around for years at this point. And it's an animation website that provides cartoon videos. And a lot of the content is really funny. I've been a fan for a very long time. So I'm also going to download the dot .pocket file of this game. And I'll include a link in the description to this game and this video as well because I love the parody video games that these guys create and it actually goes above and beyond considering the type of content that they originally provided. On the analog pocket itself, if you go into Tools and GB Studio and Play Creations, you will find all of the games that we just patched into dot .pocket files and they'll all be playable from this menu. So let's pick one of these patched ROM hacks and check it out. Here is one of the patched games that are available through this method. This is a color hack of the original Super Mario Land and it does look really nice. The only real complaint that I have with this ROM hack is the fact that Mario does look kind of weird. But other than that, the scenery and the colors look very nice and the game is still very fun to play. Now the interesting thing about Pokemon Red and Blue are that they are Super Game Boy enhanced, so if you were to plug them into a Super Game Boy or use an MGBA emulator core, then you can actually get some color out of these games as opposed to playing them in black and white. However, this color hack actually takes it a step further and uses assets from Pokemon Crystal, which was a Game Boy Color game. So at first glance, I thought this patch was just to put the Super Game Boy enhancements in, but no, it actually uses the Pokemon sprites from a second generation Pokemon game. And it really makes me interested to want to play this game all the way through on the analog pocket just to see what else they changed with this ROM patch. Here's the color hack of Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, which I featured on the channel before, and I'm very happy to see it here with the analog pocket as well. In addition to implementing full color, this color hack also allows you to play as Luigi if you wanted to. And finally, here's Marzipan Beef Reverser. And this game has a very interesting concept. You play as Marzipan, one of the characters from the Homestar Runner website, and you have to use your hair whip to defeat pieces of beef in order to send them back into a cow to bring that cow back to life. And it's a very quick and pretty tough game with only a few levels in it. But there are some secret bosses that you can unlock as well if you meet certain conditions in the game. And if you're a fan of Homestar Runner and you have an analog pocket, then this is worth your time. And just because I could, I changed the color filter to the original Game Boy DMG look, just so I could play Marzipan Beef Reverser with that classic cream spinach color of the original Game Boy.
And we'll wrap things up with one more color hack of the original Kirby's Dream Land, which was Kirby before he had copy abilities. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I will be doing more of an in-depth review on this device in the future. But in the meantime, if you already have an analog pocket or you have one on pre-order and you're waiting for it to be shipped, hopefully this video was helpful in showing you something really nifty that you can do with your device. Or maybe it hyped you up even further for when your device comes in the mail. In either case, if you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, and please feel free to continue the conversation in the Budget Aquaman Discord. Again, thank you so much for watching, and if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.